Mountain Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers, Chris McGee, James Worthy, Ali Clifton. We got Brez and Trudell handling the post-game interviews you will hear from everyone. Lakers lose the opener for the second straight year to the Los Angeles Clippers. Just 71 days after winning that trophy right behind you. Big game, James. Lakers were back at it. It was all Clippers, plus 15 in threes, plus 12 in the paint. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard did their thing. Lakers a little sloppy, as expected. 19 turnovers. A little rusty. 19 turnovers. Uh, quick turnaround after 71 uh, days of uh, being out of the playoffs. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a new season, you know, and, and, and the Clippers are, have a new attitude. Uh, the Lakers obviously are, are trying to blend those players together, the four new starters, and they were a little rusty. You, you expected the Clippers to come out. You know, Paul George is going to be a problem, uh, along with, with, with Kawhi Leonard. Uh, the Lakers know what they have to do. They'll look at some video and, uh, you know, try to come back the next game. But it's only one game. But the Clippers, they have a new attitude, and they have a lot more to prove uh, tonight. So hats off to the Clippers. They played a great game, and, uh, you know, the Lakers have to pick up and go from here. Yeah, one game. I like that perspective, that reminder we got from Kevin Harlan during the broadcast tonight. Mm. You know, after losing to the Clippers a season ago, as you mentioned, dropping that opening night, the Lakers went on to win 24. They went 24-3 and three in their first 27 games. And I think it was a lot of what we expected coming into tonight, all the circumstances. It's the reality. It is not an excuse. Um, the Clippers showed up and did what they were supposed to do. I think yeah. that's an element we can't forget, was that there's a lot of motivation on their side as well, uh, given how things went for them last season, a season ago. Uh, and they came out and they did what they were supposed to do. Yeah, you look at the uh, big four in this game, the two superstars for both teams, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, combining for 59 points. Uh, Paul George, 13 of 18. LeBron James with 22, 7 of 17. Slow start, but got it going. AD, 18 points, 8 of 15, and 7 rebounds. Uh, end of the third quarter kind of sticks out to me, guys. Lakers, up to that point with about two minutes and 27 seconds left, they were right there. Many chances to take the lead. Could never do it. Luke Kennard hits a shot, and then Paul George goes on a 10-0 run. Just like that, Allie, the quarter ends, and the Clippers are up 11 points. Look, I think Frank told us yesterday what we all need to keep in mind. There are going to be some ugly moments. There are going to be some ugly nights. And I think the moments tonight that stood out, particularly – to end that third quarter, also to end the first quarter. Stretches and runs in which they could have taken advantage, and instead it went against their favor. Uh, I think when you look at a guy like Paul George, we have to remember, you said that he's going to be a problem. The narrative about Paul George has never been about who he is in the regular season. It's always about what happens when it matters most mm -hmm. in the postseason. Yeah. That's where he has struggled. And so to see what he was able to do, you point to those 10 straight points. He is a superstar in this league. He's one of the best two-way players in this league. His ability to score in the ways in which he can score we saw it tonight in the home opener for him or the the opening night game for him he did what he was supposed to do reminded us who he was mm -hmm. before we get to the ring ceremony because we do want to talk about some positives that came out of tonight the lakers getting their championship rings i want to talk lakers defense and i don't want to talk a lot about last year but it is so fresh because it just happened literally like six weeks ago we said in the pregame show this is a different team different style some new personnel. You lost some defensive-minded guys. I think, James, we were used to that Laker team really being able to lock in. We only saw glimpses of it tonight, maybe in the second and third quarter. But first quarter, fourth quarter, Lakers kind of struggled defensively, and I think that's where they're going to have to improve the most and tighten it up. I think they'll get in sync. Uh, you know, they, they lost a couple of players to White Howard, McGee, uh, you know, shot blockers. Avery Bradley. Uh, Avery Danny Bradley Green. was a perimeter uh, assassin. So, yeah, those are the things that, you know, even though they are multi-talented and they brought in four new fresh players, those are the type of things that you're going to have to, you know, work on as a team. Because when you lose, you know, players, you bring in other players, you know, offensively is easy. Defensively, the communication, I think that's where Marcus Saul will come in. Shooter's a pretty good defensive player. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but they're going to have to figure out how to get in sync defensively. Also, when you have... Paul George, as hot as he was, there's really no defense for that. But the Lakers, you know, they, they, they have some improvement. They know they're going to have to work on some, some things. And so uh, that, that's going to be their challenge on the defensive end.
You know, they often say, though, that it's not when it comes to the defensive end of the floor, it's not about the size per se, though that was a luxury for the Lakers last season and they made that work. It's all about what's inside. And I actually think that the Lakers have a lot of dogs. They have a lot of defensive minded guys. But to your point, it's going to take some time to put it all together on that end of the floor, the communication, having your legs, having your wind and having that be a strong backbone, because I would actually argue that of the positive things tonight that you were able to take away, it's that when the Lakers die, dive into themselves mm -hmm. and really dig deep, they're going to be a strong defensive team. That will be their identity yet again this season. All right, guys, after the shortest offseason in NBA history, literally, the Lakers received their 2019-2020 uh -huh. championship rings. Championship rings have symbolism dripping with bling. Each ring contains 804 stones for a total of 16.45 total carats. Allie, I think that's pretty good. The most in NBA history, 17 purple uh, amethyst stones in the L for each championship. 0.95 carats of purple amethyst for 95 days spent in the bubble. I don't even know what I'm saying. Each <laughs> number has a mamba snake behind it and a removable top, a removable top. Big game, James, reveals all the retired Laker jersey. So you're in that ring. What an honor. Special. <laughs> to be in, in 17th, the one that ties Woo. the Celtics. There it is. Allie, you want to jump in there? I, I, I just said all that, but that's a beautiful looking ring, isn't it? I, I mean, I just think when it comes down to it, something like that can contain that much. <sighs> The way in which you can become so creative in the things that that right there, these guys will have for the rest of their lives to symbolize and remind them of what it took to be rewarded with that right there. That is what it's all about. Yeah. Listen, they fell down by 22 in the first quarter because those things are heavy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were tired lot. from carrying it. It took, took a while to get used to. Uh, no, all joking aside, those <laughs> things are, are, are beautiful. and Big game, I got to ask you, I mean, you know, we talked a little bit about it in the pregame show about what it's like ring ceremony night. I, I can only imagine uh, the memories that come back and, and that feeling. Phil Jackson always said, huge emotional letdown as well. But when that first game ends, sitting at that locker, you look at that ring, aren't you? You are. <laughs> you know, uh, tonight they lost the game. I'm sure they're disappointed, things they, they need to work on. But riding home tonight, they'll be driving and they'll be... They'll be looking at that ring, you know, and then they'll put it in the safe and yeah. get on the business. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to enjoy it, though. It really is, Geeter. Um, you know, particularly those who, um, you know, who didn't think they were going to get one. You know, think about the guys who came to this team. Morris, uh, a couple of guys came in new last year, got a ring. I want to say this. I want to give props to Jeannie Buss, the Laker organization, the way they handled uh, ring night like nobody's ever gone through this before no fans uh, the messages from the families the kids from the I promise school uh, the fact that the banners not unveiled yet Allie uh, with a note on it saying stay tuned uh, pretty cool amazing props I mean I think that's where the emotion truly reaches yeah. its its height I thought it was so special what the organization did um, I loved watching the players look up and see their families um, you know they go home to them every single night but that moment right there, I mean, it makes it all what it is. And um, it's, then you have to think, oh, now it's time to play a game of basketball. It's hard. It's yeah. hard to do. Yeah. Well, all right, special. let's get you the highlights so you can see it for yourselves. The NBA on his debut for the Lakers with 17. Let's head back to Staples Center. Lakers head coach Frank Vogel speaking with Mike Trudell and the media via Zoom. Hey, Frank, what did you see as the biggest difference in that first quarter when the Clippers jumped out to that 22-point lead? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they just they came out really hot. Um, we had some good luck going, going down. I think we turned the ball over uh, a few times uh, during that stretch. But um, you know, obviously, you know, they, they just jumped on us early. And uh, we'll have to go back to the tape and see exactly what happened. You mentioned all preseason you were going to play the extended rotation and keep some guys' minutes down. I think it, it was 11 tonight. LeBron and AD played limited. How does that impact what you're – trying to get to on the floor with rotations and how is that going to play out for the next couple of weeks? Yeah, well, uh, we'll see. We need to evaluate game to game. It's uh, it's not ideal, but I do, I do feel it's necessary um, you know, both to uh, manage, manage guys' minutes the right way and, and length of their rotations uh, throughout the game. Uh, and getting through this stretch healthy is, uh, is a priority. And, uh, you know, and evaluating, 
you know, how our new guys fit is, is a priority, you know, which, which we have, you know, had a normal amount of time to, uh, to do, to evaluate. So, um, you know, we'll continue to look at that and I'm sure we'll, we'll look at different lineups along the way. Um, you know, but the guys, five guys on the floor got to be better than we were tonight. Frank, uh, could you speak to the, the little run that Paul George went on late in the third quarter that seemed to give them momentum back to the Clippers and what your defense was or wasn't doing in that situation? Yeah, a lot of it was, in, was on one-on-one -on -one coverage or uh, you know, off the screen where we weren't uh, providing enough resistance. And um, we tried to bring more help as he was getting hot. But uh, you know, by then, most of the damage had, had been done. Um, but he just had a terrific night. And like I said, a lot of it was one-on-one -on -one situations, which, you know, we got to gotta do a better job of pushing up on him and, and making sure that we're uh, bringing appropriate help. Bill? Hey, Frank. Uh, how did you um, evaluate Marcus Saul's night? Obviously, um, got into that early foul trouble. Just what do you take away from just seeing him out there tonight? Yeah, he's going to be fine. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, um, being matched up with uh, a three-point shooter, um, you know, it was a challenge for all bigs. Um, we have coverage in place that we weren't, weren't sharp enough covering for him. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed in myself. I didn't put the ball in his hands more uh, in the top of the key like we did in the preseason uh, to take advantage of, of his passing uh, ability. So, uh, you know, part of, part of learning new players and guys getting, getting comfortable and acclimated. Uh, and then the foul trouble limiting themselves as well. Kyle? Hey, Frank. Uh, related to what Mike was asking earlier, um, you know, you, you take out, I think LeBron didn't check in and after the seven, like almost eight minute mark, and then AD comes out with about three and a half minutes left. And obviously it was a big lead, um, but, but not a huge lead. Are those decisions that you're going to be a little more conservative in making, given sort of the long-term goals and and some of the early season uh, health concerns you talked about with us, especially with those two guys? Absolutely. You know, we're going to be conservative with their minutes early on in the season, and um, you know, uh, we have the depth to do it. You know, we didn't play well enough to win to win a game tonight, but uh, you know, we have the depth to. Uh, manage our minutes intelligently early on in the season while we're uh, trying to get our legs under us. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to do so. And uh, we, like I said, we have the depth uh, for guys to fill in and, and still uh, play winning basketball during those, those stretches. Dan, Wilkie. Hey, Frank, um, can you take us back to pregame? We, we saw the, the look on your face when you saw your, your wife and your daughters up there. Um, you pulled the mask down a little bit and uh, flashed a huge smile. Uh, did you know that was coming? And then I guess secondly, what was it like to, to have to turn all of that emotion off in six minutes? And how difficult was that? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that was coming. Uh, that was something I'll never forget. It was a really great moment. You know, I love my family, my wife, Jim. My daughter's elected and Ariana, you know, to show up, uh, you know, delivering that message uh, in that moment was a surprise. And uh, I certainly got a little choked up. Um, in terms of the turnaround, you know, I, I'll be able to do it. And I think our guys were able to do it. We didn't, we didn't play well in the first quarter, but I don't know if it was you know, totally about the ring ceremony. Um, and once it's over, you appreciate it. You know, you know how special it is. Um, but you move on. You move on quickly. You get into the game. Game comes quick, and, and you, you got to get focused. And uh, I think our guys are. You know, or, or, I'm sorry. I think, I think our guys were, even though we didn't, we didn't play very well, obviously in the first quarter. They're going to try to distract him by double teaming him. He's going to be, have to be quick to alert. The Lakers did a good job of moving without the ball. In the second quarter, we need more of that for four quarters, Geeter. Great breakdown there, James. Uh, I want to talk new guys. We got four of them. Got some notes here. Schroeder, we'll start with him. Then we're going to talk Trez. Those guys together I thought looked pretty good. Frank uh, talked about Gasol. Said, my fault. Need to use him better. 
more as a facilitator. We know teams are going to try to extend him, put pressure on him that way, and Wes Matthews is going to find his way. So let's start with Montrez Harrell and Dennis Schroeder. Loved what I saw from those two guys. Oh, Dennis was fast, on, on both change ends of the pace, floor. Yep. looked great. I thought there was different moments with him and Trez, with him and Marcus Saul, with him and Anthony Davis in the pick-and-roll situations, the 1-2 game, uh, the different options in which he can provide you on the floor, being able to knock down the three ball, um, he can do it, a little bit of everything. It, but what I've loved about him is as much as we've talked about him as a scorer, large in part because he was that sixth man of the year runner-up scoring off the bench a season ago, he was getting after it on the defensive end of the floor. The head of the snake providing that kind of energy. I, I like that you brought that up. You and I were kind of watching the game, looking back, talking to each other. He, he switches at the right time. He communicates. He gets into guys. But I just love his change of pace, James. And I just feel like there's going to be nights... You know, we, we're talking out there, all of us. He, he's also a guy when a team's on a run, he's going to get you a bucket. Yeah. You know? He's, he's going to make them unpredictable. When teams are expecting us to go to LeBron or AD, Shooter has the ability to break you down and get to the cup. He's a shot maker. He hits floaters. Uh, he can hit the three. He can also uh, distribute the basketball. So I'll give these guys a few more games mm -hmm. to get to get playing together, and he's going to be a, a key factor in that offense because of his being unpredictable, and he's, he can make some shots. What did you feel about Trez? Watch him on Trez. I, amazing. Yeah. Uh, six or seven from the field. Only, well, missed, it, only it, missed two free throws. Is it the motor? Uh, it's the motor, yeah. Geeter, and I think they got to get used to him. He's a diver. Yeah. So when you're looking to pass to him, you should expect him to be diving and get it to him because he's that type of player. He's going to get offensive rebounds. Uh, I think he's going to be a huge factor uh, you know, we don't have the the the, the height and shot blockers. I, I, I was just but, gonna say, but don't Mark have Trish the will come from the weak side. Yes, he will, and he can he can disrupt some shots. So maybe not the height, but the toughness is there. Doesn't have the length we're used to seeing in that role, but he he makes up for it. And sometimes it's a part of the second and the third effort that you're not expecting yeah. uh, as an offensive player. But the other thing that I liked about him as well is he doesn't need the ball necessarily to play downhill. Yeah, he's going to find a way to get to the rim but not need the ball in his hands. And so it continues to put pressure on the defense. They're so used to it coming from guys like LeBron and Anthony Davis. But when he can play out of that pick and roll action and continue to put that pressure, it's dominant. It's yeah, dynamic. I look, I, I look for he and Schroeder to have the same kind of relationship that, that Lou Williams yeah. and he had when going through the cup, little dish passes. It'll come. I know it's not the debut we all wanted from Marcus Gasol. Marcus Gasol will probably tell you that same thing. Early foul trouble, never could find a rhythm, wasn't as involved offensively as Frank said. And, and like I said, teams defensively are, are going to try to do some different things with him because he is a little bit older, James, but he still knows how to use his body and he knows how to play. I don't know. I just have too much respect for him to, to, to panic yet on Marcus Gasol. Oh, no need to panic. <laughs> he's no a pro. Panic. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, he's, a, he's an all-star. He's a defensive player of the year. And he still has some basketball left in his motor. I think it's just a matter of getting used to playing. He started tonight, and I think that's probably what he's going to do. But get him with the right combination. Vogel might have to play a little bit, get him with the right guys where he can be productive, especially uh, as a passer from the top of the key. LeBron received his fourth NBA championship. Lakers tweeting this pic of the championship ring with the caption, this is what it's all about. It really is. That's why you can't get too high, too low, win or lose. These kind of games, guys, you obviously want to be playing well, but that is what it's all about, James, and uh, these Lakers now know it. And uh, for LeBron James, it's his fourth ring and AD's first. And, and with that, you've mentioned many times on this show, you just want to do it again. Once you taste that honey, Geeter, you, that's all you want, more honey. What do you mean, guys think of uh, LeBron and AD tonight? <laughs> I'd like some honey, too. More honey, baby. Bro, that. needs it. Some of that clover honey. What did you think of LeBron and AD tonight? Uh, you know, it's what I expected. You know, um, AD's gonna he's gonna receive some 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 defensive attention this year. A lot of double teams. Uh, I thought they played okay. You know, it's for 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 a team that just turned around after winning the championship. Uh, it was the first game. Um, I was a little bit concerned about the points in the paint, but overall. You know, uh, they'll 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 make the adjustments. I thought LeBron was just you know you could tell he's he's a champion, man. It's been a long long year for him. He I I, I didn't feel like he was tired at all. Yeah. I just felt like he was just you know trying to find his way and trying to help his teammates. Didn't quite have the explosiveness that he usually has. He might have been a little tired. It's, it could be. Truthfully, I think coming out of this game healthy 
is all that matters, mm -hmm. especially with those two. Yeah. You know, given what tonight was all about and uh, the expectations for the both of them, they're not, they're not the ones you worry about. No. And they, they handled what they were supposed to in the way in which they were going to. I mean, I just think that there were spurts, there were glimpses, there were, there were good things for both of them. Uh, I, I know mentally they know that there will be some positives to take, but they also have the understanding that each day they're only going to get better and, and better. Um, and, and today was just opening night. When they lay their heads down at night, it's going to be about that ring, and tomorrow they wake up and, and they move on. They get ready for what's next. We've also talked about it for a month. LeBron and AD aren't going to play tonight, most likely the first few weeks, like they did in October. No. Yeah. It's not going to happen. As they should. They should not because they have a lot of wear and tear on their bodies. Uh, and, you know, I think Vogel will kind of slowly work them in. Uh, they'll get to work in practice. And, you know, I'm not worried about the Lakers. They, they, they have some work to do. They got four new players they'll incorporate. And some practice time will be good for them. But uh, I'm not worried about this game. I'm not worried about the first couple of weeks. I think they'll be okay. I like your attitude. Lakers. 14 points from Dennis Schroeder in his Lakers debut. He's speaking with the media via Zoom. And it's something special. Um, I think uh, they, you know, played a hell of a season last season. And, um, I mean, just to see that, to be around it, you know, and uh, feel the atmosphere even without no fans. Um, I mean, it was special, you know, and uh, I think everybody who plays basketball needs that goal. All right, let's go now to Kyle Goon. Hey, Dennis. Um, before the season, you talked um, about how you, you were looking forward to trying to get a, a starting role in this team. Um, I know you started before, but, but what does it mean to be an opening night starter? And what did you miss about it these last two years in Oklahoma City? I mean, it's, uh, you know, everybody. Me, I'm, I'm a team player, you know, so uh, I'm in an OKC. Um, I accepted my role, you know, and uh, they came straight to me. And it was like Dennis, uh, you know, come off the bench, bring the energy. You know, and, uh, I mean, for me personally, I just wanted to take that, you know, uh, that next step. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's about it. I just, you know, whatever I can do to, to win games, I will do it. And everybody knows that as well. But at the end of the day, there was just uh, one personal uh, thing I had. Okay, let's go now to Jovan. Hey, Dennis. Um, we, we saw it a bit in the preseason, you and Mark with the two-man game, and, and then tonight you and Mark again, and, and you and Trez. Where would you assess your on-court chemistry with those two and, and kind of developing that two-man game? Like I said, I think it's a, uh, it's a dangerous uh, combination. But at uh, the end of the day, we've been together for nine or ten days and I have five practices. I think we got to figure each other out and um, see what everybody likes. And then uh, we go from there, you know, and try to build up and uh, try to get better each day. Suppose it's, it's tricky to compare this to any of your previous ring nights, just given the circumstances. But uh, you know, wondered how that, that transition from the emotion of, you know, the I Promise kids, your family, and then the game starts. Uh, how do you think if at all it impacted the first quarter and how did that impact the game? Uh, it's just weird on all facets, to be honest. It's just a weird day, um, you know, celebrating a historic moment with our franchise and a historic run what we did last year and then having to do it without our family and friends and our fans. It's just, uh, just a weird day and all in all. And then having to get straight to competition basketball. Um, just, a, just, a, just a weird day, honestly, to say the least. Anything stand out initially just from the basketball? in this game? Well, obviously, um, we, we didn't play to what we wanted to do in the first quarter, and they came out like gangbusters and uh, hit us in the mouth, which was perfectly fine. You know, because they were withstand that, get back into the game, make a game out of it. And um, they did a good job of closing the third quarter out and kind of spreading that lead, and we weren't able to get back into the game after that. But this game one, um, it's the first test for us. we literally been together for nine days. Um, as a full group, uh, we got some returning guys, but we got a lot of new pieces that's going to play a big role in our in our in our um, in our success this year. So uh, we look forward to watching the film tomorrow and get better from tonight. Dave. Dave. Dave, you need to come off mute, Dave. 
Thanks, LeBron. Uh, you called it a weird day, but certainly when we saw you walk away from center court holding the ring, marveling at the details of it, did you get an appreciation for it? Uh, there's you know, a ton of references to what you guys went through last season, 17 amethysts for 17 championships, 9, 0.95 carats for 95 days in the bubble. Uh, could you speak about the ring? I mean, it was just a combination of what we've been through, you know, in uh, 2019 and 20. You know, so many... Um, so many uh, ups and downs, uh, a lot of adversity, um, just so many storylines and so many things that happened, both good and bad for our franchise. Um, you know, for that to um, you know, come, you know, cultivate the whole season, uh, bring it into all one uh, moment um, to be able to celebrate that moment with my teammates and our, and our franchise. Um, like I said, uh, you know, it was a pretty cool feeling, but at the end of the day, you would definitely love to be able to do that with the fans, do that with our family, um, our friends, because they they, they, they play a sacrifice to that as well, you know, um, throughout the whole season. So, um, you know, like I said, happy to be a part of it, but, um, you know, bitter, bittersweet for sure. Dan? Hey, LeBron. Um, you mentioned sort of the weirdness. It's, it's only been 72 since you guys won that trophy that was at center court. Um that's part of the reason why I'm sure your minutes were what they were tonight. How weird is that um, to be at the start of a season and, and not really turning the engine and pushing the gas all the way, or even more so than you normally would? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, another day is over with. You know, I'm uh, very uh, proud of what we was able to accomplish. Um, I'm excited to move on to the next day. Um, like I said, it was, uh, you know, it was just. It even felt weird just having a basketball game today, you know, um, you know, for me personally, um, probably for a lot of other guys. But, you know, I'm happy we was able to get our foot underneath us, happy we was able to get back on the floor. We know, um, you know, what this season is going to, you know, entail. But, you know, now we can move on. You know, we can move on from last year this season. Um, it was a hell of a run for us in 19-20. Um, but now we can focus on 2021. So, um, you know, look forward to that. Speaking of feet, yeah. uh, Go ahead, Dan. You can go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking of feet, how's the ankle? Um, it seemed like it got caught up underneath you a little bit. Yeah, it did. Um, I turned it pretty good, but um, I don't think it's going to uh, stop me from um, playing on Friday. So, got a couple of days. You know, obviously, you know how I am about treatment. So, I'll do that around the clock. And um, I think I should be fine right now. Hey, LeBron, two, two questions. Uh, first of all, you had your phone on the court with you during the ring ceremony. Were you FaceTiming somebody or what, what were you? Yeah, I FaceTimed my wife first to see if she, uh, I wanted her to be a part of that for sure. Um, she didn't answer the phone. Um, and then I FaceTimed my mom and my mom answered and uh, um, I showed my mom what we were doing at that point in time, even though it was on television, I kind of just wanted her to be a part of it in the best way, shape or form of her actually being there. Um, so, I was on the phone with my mom all the way up until, um, you know, the, the ring started to go and I could kind of pay attention to my teammates and see what was going on with the Jumbotron. But uh, that was a pretty cool, um, pretty cool feeling for me personally. And then the second question just was, uh, it was is, it, is it just hard to be back at game one and at the, at the starting line, you know, given that last year was everything that it was and it was such a marathon and 13 months to get to the mountaintop? Is it just hard for you to process starting over? It's not the fact that it's starting over. It's the fact that it's here already. Um, you know, I've always had a routine of how I prepare going into a season um, after a finals run or after a playoff run, knowing the amount of time that I kind of have um, to for my body, for my mind, um, you know, for the team that we're going to be. Um, and it was just so much uncertainty of when we're going to start the season, how we're going to start the season. Is it going to be December? Is it going to be early December? Is it going to be Christmas? Is it going to be January? Is it going to be all these other things? And then boom, December 1st training camp, first game of the season is happening on the, 20, on the 22nd. So it was just a lot. Um, I can't even sit here and lie to you. It was just it was too much to kind of grasp. Um, so, uh, but we're in it now. Like I said, I'm happy today is, you know, it's, it's, it's over with and uh, we can focus on the season, but it's just a lot. It's a lot to process. Okay, last two questions. Um, Kyle Bloom. Hey, LeBron. Um, you know, Frank has talked about, um, you know, he, he wants to make more conservative decisions um, with you and AD. 
uh, especially just in this early part of the season. Um, I've, you, you checked out with about eight minutes left or so. Can you imagine some situations in the next couple of weeks where, you know, the, the Lakers are trying to reduce your minutes and make sure that you're staying safe, but you also feel like you might want to go into a game? Yeah, that's going to be, a fun, you know, it'll be a balance. And obviously, um, coach decided me to, you know, coach and uh, my trainer, Mike, decided to hold me out those last eight minutes. Uh, one, we had the game, you know, we, you know, we kind of got down 13. Those they were they were on the flow, they were flowing, and they had a momentum more than we had. And also, I had just turned my ankle as well. So, you know, they made the the, the judgment to hold me out. Um, there will be games where there will be a fine line, uh, or oh, well balance of okay, should I go back in if I'm at that minutes, if I'm high in minutes, or you know, um, should I stay out? So, now that's what communication is all about between myself and uh, you know, and, and coach and, and Mike as well. So. Um, it was game by game. Last question, Rachel. Hey, LeBron, what are you going to do with your ankle? You've had so many ankle turns over the years. What is your routine to get it ready for Friday? Uh, I'll go home and have dinner right now, and uh, I'll ice it, and uh, and I'll drink some wine that'll flow right to the ankle. Mm -hmm. That's the recovery I can have. Uh, Important. Yeah, yeah, I'll make sure I drink on the left side of my body so it just goes <laughs> right down to my left leg, right down to my ankle. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be around the clock. I'll wake up tomorrow morning before I leave the house and also get some more treatment and then get some at the facility as well and just continue to do that. You know, um, we have a couple of days. So, um, I, like I said, I, I feel like I'll, I'll be fine. Thank you, LeBron. I appreciate it. All right, 30 seconds left. Big game, James. What are you looking forward to on Christmas against the Mavs? Hey, that's going to be a good game. Luka Doncic is coming in here. Well-coached team. Uh, Lakers will get to the video, get a little rest. Yeah. Come back strong. I think as LeBron said, they're ready to go home, go to bed, put the night behind Drink them, wine. and start, start over. Uh, and it's another opportunity for them to get better, both ends of the yeah. floor. Strange opening night, though, right? You get your rings. He's right. It's just no one there. It, it, yeah. it really continues to be... Kind of takes a little bit of your it, mojo away because you know you're celebrating, you're getting the ring, everybody's excited. And then you look over there and you're like, "Damn, we got to play a game." Yeah. So mentally, you kind of don't have all that you need. But I like what I saw in the second quarter. They'll be okay. You know what I like being back with all of you.